brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to yet another bright new day with all its opportunities for pleasing Him. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Three of our books of common prayer with our opening sentence for Lent and continues on page 35 and following. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Venite. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we have that opportunity, yet another opportunity to make ourselves right with God. Let us examine ourselves and bring before God those things of which our consciences are afraid. And let us ask for God's forgiveness. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our psalm appointed for today, and it is found on page 500 and, sorry, page, yes, 556, page 556. Let us recite the psalm together. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evil doer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. 
from my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. Let them who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. And now that I am old and grey-headed, O God, do not forsake me till I make known your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You've done great things. Who is like you, O God? You've showed me great troubles and adversities, but you will restore my life and bring me up again from the deep places of the earth. You strengthen me more and more. You enfold and comfort me. Therefore, I will praise you upon the lyre for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing with joy when I pray to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed and disgraced who sought to do me harm. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come to our first reading, which is taken from the book of Genesis. And we are reading Genesis chapter 42, from verse, verse 29 to verse 38. When they came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke harshly to us and charged us with spying on the land. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is now with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the land, said to us, By this I shall know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me. Take grain for the famine of your households, and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me, and I shall know that you are not spies, but honest men. Then I will release your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. As they were emptying their sacks, there in each one sack was his bag of money. When they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were dismayed. And their father Jacob said to them, I am the one you have be bereaved of children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, 
and now you will take Benjamin. All this has happened to me. Then Reuben said to his father, You may kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead and he alone is left. If harm should come to him on the journey that you are to make, you would bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to show up. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. So we turn to page 52 of our Books of Common Prayer for the canticle, Jesus Savior. Jesus Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. And now we come to our second reading. And our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark. And we read from Mark chapter 4. And we read from verse 21 to 34. Mark chapter 4, verses 21 to 34. Jesus said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get. And still more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God.
So let us reflect now on this passage that we read from Mark's Gospel. We read from chapter 4, verses 21 to 34. And this just follows the parable of the sower. And what we have in this section is a number of what we might call mini parables. Uh, we might say very cryptic kind of sayings that Jesus um, puts out. The interesting thing about it, for me anyway, is that at the end of these series of short parables, it says that with many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, presumably the larger group, not the inner core of disciples, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. So it suggests that Jesus was speaking to the larger groups and it suggests that, you know, what he was saying was difficult. So that there was need for him to actually fully explain what he was talking about in private to his disciples. So that sort of sets the stage for us you know, as we look at these many parables from verses, from verse 21 to verse 34, it's just a stage for us that it's really um, not easy. So we pray that, you know, as we discuss this, it will certainly, with God's help, become somewhat clearer. But if we take it in bits and pieces, we might look at, at um, 21 to 23. He said to them, is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. So Jesus, of course, here is enlightening the, the message, the gospel, that message of the kingdom of God has come through him, in him. That is the, what Jesus is talking about. But that that is not to be kept, that message, even though it, Jesus may just be talking to a relatively small number of people at any given time. The message really is a message for all. It's like a light. And if you have a light, a light is to give, if you a lamp, I should say, a lamp is to give light to the whole area the whole household, the whole room, and you don't put it where that where it's hidden. So by its very nature, light is to, is to be exposed so it can, uh, you know, get rid of the darkness. And the kingdom of God, Jesus is saying, is like that. The kingdom of God, yes, at this time, it might be only a few people who are hearing it in his time, at his time, but that light, the light of the... The kingdom of God has come. That message is really intended for eventually for all the world. And that message is it will indeed be spread over. So I guess it's for those who hear it, hear that parable, it's for them to, as they come to, be, to better and better understand it, even the disciples, it's for them to ensure that that message is not put under a bushel basket. In other words, they don't keep it to themselves. But well, it's spread. So others might come into that good news of the kingdom of God. And it even applies, of course, to us today, who have received that message. We ought to understand the, the implications. It's not to be put under a bushel basket. We too, in our lives and our work and our words, must make sure that that light is shining especially in the darkness, in those dark places, the light of that knowledge of the kingdom of God must be spread by our, we have down to this time, that responsibility to continue to do, to make sure that the light shines and we do not put our lights under our bush, our lights to do with our knowledge and experience of the kingdom of God must be, must be allowed to shine so others Two might be brought into that light out of the darkness of their the ignorance, the darkness of sin 
of the grip of sin, you know, and the devil. So that's, we might say, uh, we are looking at the first um, part of it. And Jesus continues right after that with a, another cryptic saying. He said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get. And still more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Again, one of those cryptic sayings, parables. And of course, what Jesus is saying, pay attention to what you hear. Listen to what I am saying to you. Is essentially what Jesus is saying. You know, pay attention. You know, the more you open your heart, you, the more you will have an understanding. There's always room for you to learn more and more. Sometimes even we ourselves feel that we understand it all. But what Jesus is suggesting here that is, is a kind of a the, uh, unending sort of treasure. So the more you get into it, the more there is that you you get out of it. You know, the more you go into it, the more you get out more and more. So it's, it's like a never-ending treasure when we go into the Word, as it were. When we pay attention to the Word. And all the implications of the Kingdom of God has come. And we ourselves experience it. Sometimes we, you know, we say it as well. We might look, be reading a Bible passage when we have a certain understanding of it. And we might go back to it another time. You know, we would seek in, you know, some more. And we would find that, yes, the first time we read this, 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 this and thought about it, this didn't come out at all. There is more to it. You know, the, the measure you give will be the measure you get. So as you seek to know God's word even and understand it even more, there are more and more treasures to be gained as we go more deeply, more and more deeply into it. We, we are not to take the attitude we know it all even in our relationship with God, in our knowledge of God's word and its application in our lives, there's always more. The measure you give, you know, as you seek to get more out of it and, and you go into it and with God's help, you know, there's more, there's always more. We can be blessed with more and more in that knowledge. But knowledge by itself is, is not really what we want. We want that relationship with God. So as we go in, we go in knowledge, we go in, in that relationship with God. And there's ever, there's so much more. We can never plumb, plumb the full depth of that knowledge of God through His Word. So the measure we give, pay attention, seek. Don't think I know it all, you know. We have to be always open. The more we want to know about God and God's Word, the more God will reveal himself to us. So there's always more for us as Christians to learn and we always must have that attitude. There's more for us. God, we can, we can never plumb the depths of God, the full depths of God, never. And the, we, have, we have this other power, another par mini power again, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day. The seed would sprout and grow he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. So again, this is a parable related to the kingdom. He's talking about the, the cycle, the natural cycles. The man goes to bed at night, he wakes up, you know, so that's the day and night cycle. The seed itself is planted and it, then it grows, then it puts out, you know, branches, etc. Eventually it puts out seed. So there is a planting time and there's a reaping time, the seed time and the harvest, the day and night. Those are the cycles that, that um, Jesus is pointing to. So, we, Jesus is saying the same about the, he's talking here about the kingdom of God, of course. Similarly, the kingdom of God. Now, at the beginning, Jesus, in his present time, 
was basically bringing that message of the kingdom of God. God's, and, and calling us, the kingdom of God had come. God had sent his son into the world, you know, to invite us into this life with him, and in him, in his kingdom. So that was the beginning, that was the seed time. And of course, as we up to our time, we hear the gospel, the good news of God's salvation in Christ, the kingdom of God having come. As we respond to that, more and more and more deeply grow in our relationship with God. And over time, as that news, that kingdom message is spread over the, you know, over time, over the world, the time will come. Of course, when the kingdom will come in all its fullness, the harvest time will also come. So Jesus, in this parable, is saying, just as there is seed time and harvest in the natural cycles, day and night in the natural cycles, there is also that time, the seed time, when we receive the, the, the gospel, we receive the message, and that seed grows in us. And then there is the harvest time when we, when God will come to call all his people together. When we will receive that seed, we'll have reached a point where we'll, we'll bear the fruit in our lives and be called, when God returns on the harvest time, we'll be called, we'll be part of the harvest. We'll be called into the kingdom that God has in store, that, king, that new kingdom where God will have all his people together. And of course, the parable of the, the mustard seed is one that we are more familiar with, I think, most people. We are far more familiar with the mustard seed parable. And it tells us that, you know, essentially Jesus is saying, as a mustard seed is small and goes into a huge shrub that can provide shade and shelter. So in the time, in Jesus' time, as he has, when he came into the earth, that message of the kingdom was really such as a mustard seed. Very small, but many people would have heard it or even understood it. It is the must that's the mustard seed. But of course that that kingdom message will continue to grow. And Jesus is saying we'll reach that point where it in its fullness, the fullness of its fruition. That kingdom, ultimately the kingdom, when it, com when it comes in its fullness, will there be room for all those who believed, all those who believed the kingdom and lived out the kingdom values, lived out faithfully, all those, the many, the uncomfortable multitudes, they will find rest and peace and shade in that kingdom when it comes in all his fullness. So, as we reflect on these passages this morning, uh, we pray that we will really have that full understanding. It is about our responding, you know, take, listen, listen, pay attention, our responding to God's message and growing ever more deeply in it, in our daily lives, being sources as well of that message for others and, and living it out in our lives. That really is, you know, when we try to read scripture and understand it, we always have to seek what is it speaking to us. Do not put our lives under a bushel basket. We go ever more deeply in our relationship with God as we open ourselves. We never know it all, you know. We look forward and hope to that time when the kingdom will come in all, in all its fullness. And we too will be part of that great harvest. The Lord be with you.
continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we turn to page 163 of our Books of Common Prayer for the Collect for the second Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue in prayer. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we lift up people in every part of God's world. People live in all, in all kinds of circumstances. Especially today we pray for those who live in, under conditions of war. Where people are dying, where there is destruction, where there is pain and grief. For those living under despotic regimes. For those who have experienced natural disasters. For people in all kinds of Sad situations. Today we lift them up, Lord. We pray for strength and courage. We pray for faith. We pray especially for those of your people in the midst of all this tragedy that you, that your people will be sources of hope and light and strength and courage. And Lord, we pray for your church worldwide. For all ministers of your word and sacraments, for faithfulness to their ministry, with a good example of their lives, for their work, to bring others to you. Father, we pray for the Anglican Communion worldwide, for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, for all the primates in all the provinces of our communion. And we pray especially for Howard, our Archbishop, Archbishop of the Church in the province of the West Indies, and also Bishop of Jamaica. We pray for all the bishops in our church in the province of the West Indies. We lift them up to you, Lord, for your guidance and inspiration. And we pray especially for our own bishop, the Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago, Claude. We bless his family. We pray for, for health and strength and wisdom and your grace. And we lift up all our clergy in our diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, in all their parishes and all their assignments, we pray for your guidance and inspiration, Lord. In our parishes, we pray that you will lead your people, Lord, to an understanding of how we need to serve you. Encourage us. We will encourage our people, Lord, to reach out to others in need, to live lives of, of courage and faithfulness. Today, Lord, in our country, we lift up those you have put in authority over us, our president, our prime minister, members of parliament, ministers of government, all those who have positions of authority in the public and private sector, 
all decision makers. We pray, Lord, that you will inspire them to make those decisions that will be in the good of all, for the good of all. And we pray for those who are in positions where they have to implement policy, the policy of government. Then they will go, Lord, to the very end of their abilities and powers to make sure that people receive all the benefits that are available, especially those who are very in need. We pray that as we seek to serve us, we will do all our best, Lord, for those who are in need. We continue to pray for families in our country, the homes in which our people live. May there be places of your wisdom, your presence, your grace. We pray that you will give the parents the wisdom they need to guide their children, and the children the understanding they need to listen, to obey their parents. We pray especially for young people, especially young men who are being led astray in the lives of crime and, and destruction where, they, where, where there is much harm brought to others, even death. We pray, Lord, that you will turn hearts and minds. We pray for all who work, Lord, in our schools, teachers and associated staff who all helped to nurture our children. We pray for the homes in which uh, children's are, children are being brought up, children's homes in our country, and those who are management and staff, work to, may they work together for the good of these children. We continue to pray for our senior citizens, Lord, that we'll be always mindful of them, that our eyes will be open to their needs and we, our hearts open to responding to these needs. We continue to pray. Lord, for those who are sick and suffering and crying out for relief this morning, for healing. Those suffering from the, these terrible diseases, you know, cancer and other such diseases that bring fear to people, we pray, Lord, that you will give strength and courage to those who are suffering. We pray for inspiration to those doctors and nurses and medical personnel who have to treat them. We pray, Lord, that in that interaction, your will, your wisdom and grace will be in the midst of it all. Father, we continue to pray for those who have suffered other kinds of loss, loss of jobs, loss of homes, loss in relationships, those who are saddened and, and, and at this particular time, Lord, and need encouragement and hope. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones, we remember them this morning as well, Father. We pray that you will lift them up, give them strength and courage, give them hope as they continue in their own lives. For all who are in any kind of need, Lord, we lift them up this morning. We pray that you will touch hearts and minds of your people and help us to be sensitive to the needs of others and to be sources of hope and help and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons. In the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.